Hey, this is the Shadow Mantis, and welcome to Metroid. Now, Metroid is a very weird game. It's one that I really like, but at the same time it frustrates me to no end. But that's mainly because of the difficulty, but uh, then again, you know what, I'll just stop talking about that. But first I want to like introduce you to Metroid. What is Metroid? Well, Metroid is uh, basically a hybrid of uh, Super Mario Bros. and The Legend of Zelda for the NES, not the newer ones. The newer ones aren't really like the NES ones, now that I think about it. They, they kind of have gone off on a tangent, but that's not really what I'm here to talk about. Metroid, as I already said, is a mix of those two games. It basically takes the platforming, both simple and complex, from Mario, and it uh, mixes it with all the upgrades and secrets from Zelda. There, there are so many upgrades and secrets in this game. It, it's just amazing that I was actually able to do this. And yes, I said I was able to do this because this is post commentary. I haven't really done that much post commentary on my channel. The only thing I've ever post-commentated were little shorts and also uh, Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventure and that, that was an okay Let's Play, it wasn't that great but um, yeah I'm trying to do post-commentary again just for this one just for this Let's Play mainly because this game is so difficult I would not be able to talk over it there's no way I would be able in a million years to beat this game and talk over it at the same time. That's just how difficult this game is. But yeah, there's pros and cons to post commentating. I mean, right now I'm list I'm I'm looking at a list of stuff I can talk about. So I like the viewers you guys aren't really going to get bored with this commentary cuz I'm going to be continuing the commentary. I'm not going to have like little dips where I don't talk and there's not gonna be any point where I say like oh now we're gonna go n like you know there's not gonna be any points where I'm actually telling you what is happening in the video because you can see what's happening in the video I don't really need to do that but in live commentary I, I have to do that because there's some points where I can't think of anything to say so I just talk about the actual game and that's not bad but it's more interesting to listen to something not like when I'm watching a commentator I don't want to hear stuff about the video like now we're jumping over to the right where are we going now alright oh dodge that flying thing hit that one. Oh, what's this missiles oh geez yeah I don't really that's not my kind of commentary well I do I know I do that comment kind of commentary but it's really just because I have nothing else to talk about most of the time but personally I enjoy this type of commentary where I'm talking about you know stuff that I like about the game stuff that you know actual stuff about the game but it's not what's happening in the game so yeah there's pros and cons but um yeah, as I said earlier, this game is really, really difficult. You may not really see the difficulty right here, but around episode 4 or 5, yeah, you will see it. You will. And it's not really because, like, it's bad or anything. It's just really intense difficulty. Mainly because they start you off with 30 health. That is a big, big problem with that game. This game is... It's a good game, but it's not... A great game like its predecessor no wait successor I don't know the sequel to this game is much better yes I'm talking about the Game Boy one not Super Metroid Super Metroid is a lot better than this too but Metroid 2 is also better than this that's why you know just forget it both basically what I'm trying to say is every sequel to this game is better because well it's the little things that make this game good but not great. This game could be great if a couple of things were added. Like, I'm talking about itsy-bitsy tiny things. Like, 
Maybe starting out with uh, more than 30 health? That was a big problem when I was first getting into this game. I mean, seriously, when I started playing this game, I was... Like, everyone's bad at a game when you start playing it, but it doesn't really help if you start with 30 health, and each enemy takes off 10. It doesn't help at all. Like, seriously. I know they kind of fix it by giving you energy tanks, which you'll see in a couple of minutes, maybe even, like, two minutes or something. I get one. But that's not the point. You should have 100 health when you start, or at least 99, which I'm pretty sure is actually the max at the moment. But, like, there's this suit that doubles your de your defense, essentially. And even if that was a little bit earlier in the game, it's halfway through the game, I would say. You get it. And if that was given to you earlier, that also might be another solution to this, but... Uh, I don't see that happening, just doubling your defense at the very beginning. That's not a very efficient method. You gotta work for it, right? So, I would say, like, at least make the health start at 99, and it would be already be a much better game. But there's also other things, like crouching. You can't crouch in this game. There are many, many enemies that are at your feet, and you can't get because you can't crouch. If you press down, you actually roll into a ball, which you've probably seen in the video a couple of times, but I'll just show you right now. Come on, crouch for me. Crouch for me. Alright, this guy, and by this guy I mean me, is definitely not going to crouch. And by that I mean roll into a ball, because you can't crouch, and that's really... That's just a pet peeve of mine, like... You should be able to crouch, but that's not a huge thing. Here's a energy tank like I was talking about that gives me a whole 100 more health and that would be nice to have at the beginning too because 99 isn't even that much in this game it's really not so yeah starting out with more than 30 health crouching also saving saving is oh, I can't even get started on this in this game you can't save it's a password system I mean, that's not bad, at least they tried something, but in the Japanese version of the game, you can save. There's save slots, like The Legend of Zelda. And just imagine if The Legend of Zelda had a password system. Do you know how bad that would that would look? It would just be... Like, it wouldn't be unbearable, but you'd be like, Oh, God damn it! now I gotta put in the password. But with saving, you could pop it in and go. It's that simple. And one more thing, there are no places to like heal your health, your health in this game, or your missiles. You can't get. There are no places to do that. So adding those in, which they actually did add in in the remake of this game for the Game Boy Advance, Metroid Zero Mission, they added in save stations. They added in. Um, missile stations, they added in health stations, all that stuff. And that game is far superior to this. And I'll flat out say it, that game is much better. And it's actually one of the best Game Boy Advance games to date. And that's basically just because it's this, but really good. If this game was set up with that, it would be one of the best... It's... The sequel... No, no. The remake to this game is one of the best Metroid games, by far. Because this, the way this map is, is set up and the way your goals are set up in this game, it's, it's set up so well, but everything is just not quite right with all the saving, lack of saving, lack of health, lack of crouching. It just, it's not bad, but as I said earlier, it's not great. So, as I said earlier, there is a remake to this game, and that is Metroid Zero Mission for the Game Boy Advance. That is one of my favorite games to date. It was actually the first Metroid game I ever played, and I can happily say it is one of the best. And that's mainly because it's this, but really good. Because, you know, 
it's got everything. It's got crouching, it's got health stations, it's got all that stuff. And it's also got a couple of extra areas. And, like, they don't just throw things together. Everything looks the same in this game. Everything looks the same. Like, that's how... That's, that's how you get lost in this game. Everything looks the same. And getting lost is another, another bad part of the game. When you get lost, you're done. When you get lost, you're like, ah, you know what, I'll just restart the game. It's that bad. See, now what I'm doing here in the video is I'm actually... I'm just talking about it right now because this seems really stupid. I'm trying to get one more missile because there's a missile door you have to open over to the left. And I can't, I can't, there we go. Are you serious? Let me get the missile. Come on, get the missile. No, oh, me, me. Oh my god, and I didn't get the missile. Right there, you see, that has, you have to use five missiles to open that door. Which was another thing that they upgraded from the, this game, into Zero Mission. Zero Mission, you only had to use one missile, which was great. Because you had to have missiles, but you didn't need to have five. Which I thought was a really good upgrade as well. But yeah, Metroid Zero Mission was probably a, the best start I could have to the Metroid series. Because it was one of the best games in the series, by far. Because, you know, it was just this, but amazing. And then after that I played Prime, and Prime is probably, to date, my favorite Metroid game. Maybe even tied with Metroid Prime 2. But yeah, they're both my favorite games. And, uh, well, that's really all I can say from the remakes in the Prime series. Now let's go up here. Now where am I going next? What's my goal in this game? I've already collected most of the things that I need. Oh god, here. This is not going to be fun. This is one of the hardest jumps in the games when you don't have what you need. You're supposed to come come down here when you have the space jump boots, which is actually what I'm going to get now. And uh, that's how you get back out. But now what you have to do is you actually have to get hit by that block right there. And that will, I guess, bounce you back up. So let's just see. There we go. So actually my goal right now is to go get the space jump boots. So... And that is in another area. Thus, this whole time I've been in one area, Brinstar. Probably one of my favorite starting areas in any video game. It's just a really cool starting area. It's not hard, it's not easy. It gets you right on your feet, because it has so many upgrades that you can just go and get at the beginning. See, I already have my final beam. I know there's an there's a there's another beam you can get in this game called the we the wave beam, but right now I have the ice beam. But I keep the ice beam throughout the whole game because you know why why even tr get the wave beam? You don't need it. It's not mandatory. So I just keep the ice beam throughout the whole game. You guys can do it otherwise. It's only like all it does is go through walls. And you need the Ice Beam at the end of the game anyways, so that's why I don't get the Wave Beam. But here I am, now I'm going, I'm heading to Norfair, which is a lava area, and by far the most difficult area in the game. I mean, this place will, will eat your shit. It will, like, it will just, just rape you. It's unbelievable, I'm pretty sure I actually die there. And that is not a very common sight. I'm not saying I'm great, I'm actually terrible at this game, but I know what I'm doing in the game, at least. And to die, it's not that often that I die. And Norfair is always the place where I die in this game. It's unbelievable. Alright, what am I what am I doing here? Just stop. When, whenever I watch over my videos, I just, I just think to myself, what the hell am I doing? Just continue on. I always dilly-dally around. But I guess that's all I can really say now. So, you know what? Thanks for watching. And I hope to see you in the next episode of Let's Play Metroid. Goodbye.